Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8 Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. Today we have a new radio and a new chapter in the journey this channel is taking. Many of you have already been following along on the solar powered field station project, so you may already know the plan was always to upgrade to a more powerful radio for field communications. Well that's where we've arrived today. That definitely doesn't mean we're retiring the Yaesu FT-817ND. But this new radio does mean we have increased capabilities with the field station. So stick with me a while, while I introduce you to the Yaesu FT-891, our new field radio. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. The very first thing we should get out of the way is the unboxing. I ordered the Yezu FT891 and I also ordered the YSK891 separation kit. The separation kit was important because it allows us to mount the radio body independently of the radio controls. We'll come back to that later on. And here it is, the Yezu FT891. This is an HF through 50 megahertz radio. Now many people are complaining that it doesn't have uh, 2 meters and 70 centimeters, but I'm not worried about that. We'll come back later in the video and I'll explain why. Now I'm not really a gear reviewer and I don't generally do unboxing videos, but I have to say this is packed as if there's something special inside. They wanted you to feel that care was taken when this rig was packed. I think that's brilliant. Last note on the packaging, it was designed to last the life of the radio, if not longer. But I'll try to stop babbling and just get to what's inside. The first thing you see when you open the box is the Yezu warranty card. With Yezu, it's been my experience that we won't be needing this, but we'll set it aside just in case. Next out of the box is the user manual. And this one's in German, but you can get other language user manuals from the Yezu website. There's also an advanced user manual available in PDF format on the Yezu website. Next out of the box is our Yezu fanboy sticker. You can definitely display this loud and proud, but I would suggest waiting to see if that warranty card became useful or not. Next out of the box is the body of the radio. I think I'll go ahead and switch to some B-roll to give you a better quality of video. On the front body of the radio you have two ports. One is a microphone, the other is for your control head. There's also two fans behind a protective grating. Just like the ASU FT857, the side of the radio includes hard points for the mobile bracket or mounting rails like those that come from Portable Zero. These hard points are completely compatible with the Yezu FT-857D. Now for the rear panel. We'll cover each connection from left to right, starting with the ground lug on the left, then the programming switch. Next we have the control port for the FC50, FC40, or VL1000 amp. Next, we have our data port. This is where we're going to plug in our audio interfaces like the Woofy Link or the Signal Link. Next, we have the USB port. The USB port is used for CAT control as well as updating the firmware, but it doesn't carry any audio. Next, we have the REM port for the remote keyboard. Next, we have the port for your CW key. Next, we have the external speaker port, but this isn't your headphone port, that's in a different place. Next, we have the DC input. And finally, we have the antenna port. Turning the radio over to the top, we can see the internal speaker. Turning the radio over, we can see the tilt stand. Mm -hmm. 
next out of the box is the control head and I think I'll go ahead and switch to B-roll to give you a better look at it. The first thing you notice about the control head is the screen, which is exponentially better than the Yaesu FT-857 or 817. There's also a lot more buttons, but these buttons help reduce the amount of crazy menus that we normally see on Yaesu radios, so well done. There's a couple of ports on the control head. One is for the headphones, not the external speaker, but headphones. There's also a switch to switch between your headphones and your external speaker. That's basically a level switch. There's also the port to connect the control head to the radio body. And there's a mounting lug for the separation kit. By the way, the A, B, and C buttons on the front of the face plate are programmable. Perhaps we can cover front button programming in another video. Moving along, next out of the box is the power cable. Next out of the box is our microphone. This is a standard MH31 delivered by Yezu. One of the issues I've had in the past with microphones, not just this one from Yezu, is uh, getting cold hands when using them out in the field during winter. So I may go ahead and look for a headset to use with this rig. To my surprise, one of the things that was included here was the mobile mounting bracket. Now I'm not going to install this rig in a car, but this bracket does give me some interesting ideas for integrating the rig into a man pack. I almost didn't notice this little package in the box, but the mobile mounting kit includes all the screws to mount the radio in your car. That appears to be everything in the box, but let's go ahead and lay out all the components on the tabletop. So, just to recap, we have the body of the radio. We have the control head. I have to say I really like that screen. We have the mobile mounting bracket. We have the power cable or DC input. We have the MH31 microphone. And we have the documentation that came with the radio. And we can't forget that fanboy sticker. So this is everything you get in the box, and I actually think it's worth it, even with the exclusion of 2 meters and 70 centimeters. Let me take a few moments to show you why. Now in this demonstration, I'm going to show you just one of the features of the FT-891, which the FT-857 actually doesn't have. It's called Digital Noise Reduction. I'm not going to talk through the demonstration, but I'm going to enable and disable the digital noise reduction just to show you how well it works on this rig. So come on guys, let's do the math. We have two choices here. Let's say those choices are between the FT-857, which everyone recommended I get, or the FT-891. Now what are the differences? Well, if we're focusing on the big things, the Yezu FT-857, it's got HF 6 meters, 2 meters, 70 centimeters, but it doesn't come with any filters or TCXO. 
In contrast, we have the Yaesu FT891, which is HF and 6 meters. It has a TCXO included. It doesn't need any filters. It comes in around 200 bucks less than the base 857, but it lacks 2 meters and 70 centimeters. Well, I'm willing to give up 2 meters and 70 centimeters for all those other things. Now let's talk about integrating the Yaesu FT891 into the solar powered field station. From your perspective, the solar powered field station may seem like this giant thing, but it's actually a small compact station. Now, regardless of which station we're deploying, the QRP817 base station or the QRO891 base station, we always have similar core components. We're always going to have a shelter and heat. We're always going to have a radio, a computer or tablet, a lithium iron phosphate battery and a power film solar panel. Now, when you have a chance to see that comms gear on the tabletop, you realize it's not actually that much. Let's take a look at the upcoming projects to get the 891 integrated into the field station. At the very top of the list is the DIY 10 amp hour headway based lithium iron phosphate battery pack. Do you all remember this from the channel? So first we're going to add the 50 amp charge controller to this 10 amp power pack. This is going to be our day deployment pack. We're also going to upgrade the GV5 to the GV10. Guinness on MPPT charge controller. Next, we're going to build ourselves a power distribution unit that's compatible with our field deployments. So far, the kits we've built have been designed for in the shack use, but nothing really focused on field communications. So we're going to modify these kits to build one for the field. We're going to feed the power distribution with our lithium iron phosphate battery pack and of course feed the radio and laptop from the power distribution unit. We're definitely going to overbuild this to minimize any voltage drops and to handle the 100 watts from the 891. So whenever I'm deploying with the Yaesu FT817, I've been deploying with this power film FM161200. You've seen the video on that. For the FT891, we're going to use the Powerfilm FM167200. That's a 120 watt solar panel, which brings in 7.2 amps into the field station. That's not only enough to power the rig, it's enough to power the whole station in all but the darkest times of year up here at 65 degrees north. Finally, and probably the most important of all of these things, is a go kit or go box integration. Many of you have already sent me a lot of excellent ideas. Please keep those ideas coming. The point of the go box in the context of the field station is to have a kit which is completely ready to go. What I hope to achieve is to integrate the radio body the audio interface, the battery and charge controller, all of these components that go together to make up the communication systems. All ready to go. Simply plug in the antenna and start operating. The kick in the pants is, it must fit in my backpack. I'm fairly certain that by now I've been able to thank personally each and every one of you for helping make this chapter of the field station possible. If for some reason I missed you, I apologize and I say thank you very much for supporting the field station project now. We're going to move forward with these DIY projects to integrate the Yaesu FT891 into our field station. Now those projects, especially uh, related to power will also be compatible with rigs like the ICOM 7200 or the Yaesu FT857. So please stick around for those projects. YouTube is also lacking a lot of good information on the Yaesu FT891. So look forward to tutorials on that rig. And that brings us to the end of the video. Look. If you like what I'm doing, if you like the content that I'm creating, let me know by giving me a thumbs up and leaving a comment in the comments section. 
And if you think I deserve it, please share this video with someone or someplace where people might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.